I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a video for my professional responsibility class. I'm going to be talking about the model rules here. Specifically, here I want to talk about Model Rule 3.2, which the ABA calls expediting litigation. It's really a prohibition on lawyers imposing unnecessary delays for personal reasons or for strategic or tactical advantage in litigation or leverage over the other side. So let's take a look at our rule. 3.2 is only one sentence. It says a lawyer shall make reasonable efforts to expedite litigation consistent with the interests of the client. So they don't phrase it as a prohibition, but when the rule is enforced, it's because lawyers failed to do this. They didn't make reasonable efforts to expedite litigation. Notice the components that we have here. The efforts have to be reasonable. No one is expecting you to be perfect all the time and never need an, a time extension or a continuance or a postponement. And you have to be sensitive to your client's needs. Sometimes your client needs more time or is not in a hurry. And to the extent that you can um, honor the wishes of your client and not impose too much on the court or the other party, it's worth keeping that in mind. Now, let's look at the comments, which are actually pretty helpful. Comment one starts by noting that there are a lot of occasions when it's proper for a lawyer to seek a postponement or an extension of time or a continuance, even for personal reasons. And this could be scheduling conflicts that a lawyer is expected to be in two courts at the same time, or an illness or family obligations and so forth. And sometimes you will be asked to grant the opposing counsel's request for more time. And it's usually a professional courtesy to agree because the next time you may be the one who needs to reschedule jury selection or the date of a hearing or ask for more time to file a reply brief and so forth. That being said, there are some things that are not permissible, the comment says. And it really breaks us into two categories of problems. The first is to routinely fail to expedite litigation solely for the convenience of the advocate. So I have a cartoon here of the slacker lawyer, the pathological procrastinator who just is lazy and would always like to put things off until tomorrow or next week or next month or so forth. There are people like this. There are lawyers like this, and they are very frustrating to the other lawyers that they have to deal with. And the second thing that's not permissible is delays that are solely for the purpose of frustrating an opposing party's attempt to obtain rightful redress. So if you are delaying things just in hopes that the other side will give up or that their star witness will become unavailable or that evidence will be lost or destroyed in the process and so forth, all of that is really just trying to thwart the aims of justice, and that would be a violation. Comment 1 continues, it's not a justification that similar conduct is often tolerated by the bench and bar. And so when you're in practice, you're going to see lots of lawyers who kind of abuse this privilege, who are either always late or always asking for more time, and not, not as much as others, but a lot more than everybody else would. And people may tolerate this, but um, it is not going to be a justification if you are subject to discipline. So the question then is going to be whether a competent lawyer acting in good fa faith would see the postponement that they've asked for as having some substantial purpose other than just they feel like putting things off or just a delay. It's also important to note that realizing a financial or other benefit from an otherwise improper delay in litigation is not a legitimate interest of the client. So you could have a situation where a client doesn't want to do a trial a certain week because they're scheduled to have surgery that day, or they're going to be out of the country, or they're moving to a new location. So they're going to be in the middle of a lot of disruption right then. That's one thing, but someone who just doesn't want to cough up the money yet for the other side or who is really just trying to get some other financial benefit before the other side can deprive them of that, that that's not going to be a legitimate interest. I have a few examples from recent disciplinary actions 
against lawyers for violating 3.2. Just to kind of clarify, what does this rule mean in practice? There's cases where a lawyer was accused of filing a constant stream of motions and amendments to motions and amended pleadings and so forth, really that just made the whole litigation take much, much longer than it needed to. There's also cases about lawyers being disciplined for failing to appear pretty regularly for scheduled hearings, which then forces the court to reschedule them, canceling at the last minute repeatedly, and so forth. Dilatory or delay tactics in discovery, so just repeating the same objections over and over again to production or discovery requests, taking much longer than you were supposed to to turn over documents or respond to discovery. Sometimes lawyers will only produce some of what was requested and make the other side come back and ask for the rest of it. And similarly, Discovery, as most law students know, can be weaponized as a delayed tactic. So you just keep thinking of things to ask for as a way of putting off the trial. So at some point, it becomes so egregious and such an abuse that you could be subject to discipline. Some There are cases of lawyers being disciplined in, along this rule for what they do to their own client. So they keep putting their own client off and not really prosecuting or being diligent in the matter. These are often pro uh, brought against lawyers and disciplinary actions in conjunction with a failure to show diligence or neglect of a client matter, where someone basically just kept telling the client that they would get to it, that they'll get to it, and they're not really working the case. And so the client was in a hurry or was hoping to get something done, and the lawyer just put them off either indefinitely or much longer than necessary. That concludes our lecture about ABA Model Rule 3.2. In the next lecture, we'll continue with Rule 3.3.